Yo, what is up, everyone? Hope y'all can hear me. Let's see if I need to turn my mic a little bit louder, probably. Let's see. Turn my mic a little bit louder, probably. Turn this down for the feedback. What's up, everyone? Checking chat for a second. Lovely to see everyone here. Thank you so much for joining. Create Together 3 already, third installment of this beautiful project. Um, uh, I'm incredibly happy that uh, we're at the third one. Um, I thought last year I did a little live stream rambling away about some stuff and uh, I thought I'll do that again this uh, this year. So I hope you're all with me in chat to send some questions over. I will also start on my artwork for Create Together this, uh, this stream. I got my Photoshop ready. I have no idea really what I'm gonna make. Uh, We'll see. We'll see what happens. I think part of it will also be searching for inspiration. Um, always something that uh, I like to think about properly before I start. Definitely not necessary, but uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm just going to dig into some, uh, some topics there and uh, ramble away a little bit. Um, First, I want to talk a little bit about Create Together. Like, like I said, it's the third installment already. I'm incredibly proud of what this uh, community has done and uh, inspired other people to do as well. Uh, the third one, I hope it uh, grows nicely as it did with the second one, which uh, we had also a beautiful live stream event with. Um, I hope everyone collapsed a lot as well this time. I already saw a lot of collaboration sheets being whipped up, people making artworks together, which is great. And uh, it's incredibly exciting to me. And I cannot wait to see what comes out of all that. Uh, so yeah, create together tree. Also this year, we got actually some, uh, some cool companies giving us some, uh, some nice discounts, some uh, nice support for the community. Uh, we thought we wanted to reach out to these creative companies and tools and offer you all hopefully increasingly more creative tools um, to make creating even more easy or to uh, lower the curb even more. Because uh, I think everyone should be creating, even though it's not your main thing in life. I think the last Create Together also showed that that is a uh, a really nice thing. Um, for example, the the artwork winners of last year's compilation, Sven and Jeska, also in chat, I see. In their uh, irregular lives, they do totally different things and seeing them create beautiful art is just, uh, it's incredible to see. Um, so yeah, keep that up. I hope to uh, lower the curve of uh, creativity in that sense. And uh, let's get this. quick sip create together how are y'all feeling tonight though i hope everyone is good i actually met up with some uh bitbird family last friday in uh, the hague here and it was great after all this uh after all this time to see each other again very funny it's been uh it's been a wild time also uh, getting out of lockdowns here etc like just all the corona stuff was uh, absolutely great just to party again and uh, I had a great time so thank you all for that I see that a bunch of them are here in chat so appreciate you all that was uh, that was great and thanks for organizing again uh, lovely I hope y'all that was we wasn't there to see y'all next time 
We'll be doing way more bit birdie fans. That's the plan. World's opening up. Somebody asks what I was doing on the lockers Friday. I was looking for my jacket. I got kicked out of the of the of the venue Friday. But they also asked us to do a little party there, so that's pretty cool. So that uh, happened in one night. So we'll see if we can still do party there. Uh. All right. I just want to, I guess, get started. If you have any questions, feel free to throw it in chat. Um, if you have any specific questions, whatever you want to know. Um, if I don't want to answer it, I won't, but uh, feel free asking. Um, Clemmy, if you're in here as well, if you see some good questions, I know you got me. I see them on my iMessage. Um, Will Jan, a good question to start with, will Jan Level ever make a return? That's a question we got asked a lot, actually, and I would say yes. Sometime, probably. I don't know when. I hope, I hope sometime soon. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Legendary. This guy dropped two tracks with our label and became, uh, became a legend, which is uh, quite special, actually, to me. That was very cool to see. Young level, hopefully on uh, Goldie and Finn sometime, uh, maybe for the fifth one. That will be dope. I thought with the artwork creation started, I will talk a little bit about inspiration and what it what it means to me. Um, I think getting into creative things the curb can see quite high or you don't know where to start i had that as when i was uh, when i was a child a lot i would ask my mom for example what i should draw because i never really knew and uh, sometimes i still have that problem a little bit uh, and i know that a lot of people have that problem especially if you just want to create right maybe you don't necessarily have a goal in mind or you uh, it is not an assignment somebody's given to you or like uh, you do it for work or whatever so um, yeah let's see about that i think really that inspiration is a sort of outside force um, and we're all a little bit like an egg an antenna for ideas um, if you keep your eyes open in the world, you see a lot of beautiful things and all those things also subconsciously influence uh, what you do. There are a lot of videos, for example, about people kind of uh, subliminally being influenced by things they see, branding, of course, but um, that's quite an interesting thing to think about also when you're creating yourself, like what did you actually see and what was interesting to you? Uh, create creativity for me often also starts with just ideas that get put together it's very hard to be original and that might be something that i struggled with as a creative at some point as well i think especially when i was in design school that it was uh, you have this sort of urge pressure to be uh, original but nobody tells you what that really is or think outside of the box or whatever the hell that means like what 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 even is the box you know um so i always approach things usually with the realization that it comes from things i've already seen and i'm totally okay with that uh Obviously, obviously stealing is different, uh, but sampling, also sampling ideas and mixing them up with other ideas is, uh, is beautiful. Um, also create uh, inspiration is an outside force. I say that because I actually have a video that was really important to me um, that I don't know if I can show right now. It's quite long. It's like 16 minutes. I'll, uh, Let's see, I'll grab the video for a second. See if I can get this to work.
Ah, I got a question I want to address first in chat. I see, can somebody explain me what the Create Together is, an album? So, um, Create Together is an initiative by the Bitbird Discord family uh, that started two years ago with uh, the volume one in which the community came together to create a compilation, music compilation, um, including artwork that got uh, made together with us with uh, people of the community and it turned into an amazing project like we were blown away as a as a label as a as a music label that our community came together and made such a beautiful project so without a doubt we we instantly thought let's release this project and do a second installment of it for sure because it was uh, one of the most exciting things that i witnessed and um Ever since we've just been obsessed with the create together kind of, I don't know, like the whole thing around create together. It's one of my favorite projects that we're doing right now. Um, we're in the third installment now and everyone is working together in our Discord community to create some beautiful music, which you can submit at the end of the month. Uh, entire March is create together month and also for artwork uh, you can do a submission, um, create something cool. We hope you all show your progress a little bit in our Discord. That will be very cool to see. Um, we hope you call up with other people. You can do the music and artwork if you like, whatever. It's totally free of expression um, for the artwork as well. Um, I can absolutely not wait to see what y'all come up with for a Create Together Tree. And uh, we'll release it again as a compilation uh, through Bitbird, the label, and we'll attach a li nice live event to it, a uh, live stream event. And hopefully for next year, we keep expanding this idea. And um, I'm actually quite down to see if we can do some real life meetups next year in which we maybe create some stuff together, like in the same space or host some of these master classes uh, in real life and live stream them. That will be sick. And uh, yeah, that's a, a bit of a rundown of Create Together. I hope that was, uh, that was clear. And I hope to see you all in the Discord and participate. That will be sick. I just got done with the long tour. I'll go, I, I might talk about touring a little later actually. I did indeed get off a very long tour, three month tour. But first, I was talking about inspiration. So let's get inspired. I have no clue if my computer audio will do it. I tried it a little bit earlier, but it was a bit, uh, a bit weird with OBS and whatever. So let's see. There we go. Hell yeah. All right. Computer audio is off right now. Crank it up. So this is a video. And it's not necessarily a video about like art or any, well, architecture. Obviously also art, but um, not about like creating artworks or anything that is like graphic design or, or uh, or anything like that. This inspired me incredibly. It's how architecture helped music evolve by David Byrne, Byron Byrne. And um, basically he talks about how the shape of the rooms change the, uh, um, the sound of the music basically, but not even uh, slightly, like in entire new genres basically got birthed out of uh, music being played in different spaces or like the music changed due to the spaces because of uh, for example you've got a like a classical ballroom that music needs to fill up fully versus uh, a very chatty uh, cafe somewhere and uh, it basically takes you through a little timeline of uh, 
of what what it was like. It's really interesting, and I uh, I don't know if I can really show it. I'll just play so I can see what happens. Ta-da! Structure and form. A lot of reverberation in the room, so the uh, rhythm. Just the small part. I don't even know if you can hear it really. Other places around the country had similar rooms. This is Tootsie's Orchid Lounge in Nashville. The music was in some ways different, but in structure and form, very much the same. The clientele behavior was very much the same, too. And in the meantime, I'll see so if I can make the stinger sounds a little bit softer. Had to play loud enough to, uh, the volume had to be loud enough to overcome people falling down, shouting out, and doing whatever else they were doing. Since then, I've played other places that are much nicer. I've played no, I can't. the Disney Hall here and Carnegie Hall and places like that. And it's been very exciting, but I also noticed that sometimes the music that I had written or was writing at the time didn't sound all that great in some of those halls. We managed, but sometimes those halls didn't seem exactly suited to the music I was making or had made. So I asked myself, do I write stuff for specific rooms? Do I have a, a, a place, a venue in mind when I write? Is that a kind of model for creativity? Do we all make things with a venue, a context in mind? Okay, Africa. <laughs> And the music there, I would say the instruments, the intricate rhythms, the way it's played, the setting, the context, it's all perfect. It all works perfect. The music works perfectly in that setting. There's no big room to create reverberation and confuse the rhythms. The instruments are loud enough that they could be heard without amplification, etc., etc. It's no accident. <laughs> it's perfect for that particular context, and it would be a mess in a context like this. This is a Gothic cathedral. In a Gothic cathedral, this kind of music is perfect. I think it that's... It change key, the notes are long, there's almost no rhythm whatsoever. And... I think that sort of gives a little view on what this video is about. Um, I definitely recommend y'all to listen to it, uh, how architecture helped music evolve. Incredibly inspiring video to me that showed also what different canvases basically, how they influence your, um, how they influence, I guess, your experience. Somebody posed me also an interesting uh, question regarding this, because in the physical world, basically, you, it, it, it shows that uh, uh, the space has helped music evolve, but what will that mean for future, for uh, virtual spaces? Um, because in those, in that realm, in that virtual realm, spaces can be anything, basically. So what would that do to ex the audio experience of that? Very curious about it. Um, those are very cool topics to explore as well. And I like to kind of think about these topics when I'm creating, like not, I don't want to make everything super conceptual or anything. Um, I'm definitely not too much in making too weird concepts, quite direct usually. Um, but it's the stuff like this that really gets me inspired, just having these kind of uh, meta ideas around things that uh, inspire me, make uh, usually what I make. Um, let's see. I guess we can just get a little bit started into making, uh, making some art while I'll keep an eye on the chat and maybe uh, stumble upon some good questions in, in chat. Sven, virtual space has still got a different ways of compression, I guess. I guess. I don't know. I have no idea what that would be like. Actually, yesterday I went to uh, 
a sort of food tasting in VR. It was physical space where we got food tasting in our hands, basically. It's, I tell it way worse than it actually was. It was very cool. And there was another, another space in Ghent in Belgium who did exactly the same thing. So virtually we were in the same space and they also did a, the rooms were in certain colors to uh, kind of enhance the experience of the food, which I really like. Um, I really like those uh, experiments, so to say. It was really experimental and uh, very fun. But um, the sound actually in the space was interesting because uh, it's very hard to have multiple people in the VR space while you are in the same physical space because it just feedbacks constantly. Let's see the artwork. I, I put my bitbird in there. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it as a main object. I think everyone can see my screen, right? Yeah. Where shall we start? We have to look for inspiration. Actually, I found an image earlier. Let's see if I can uh, if I can find it. Where did my right there? So there's this uh, album artwork by the Beach Boys. There was uh, I think it was Smiley Smile Smiley Smile Beach Boys. Smiley, yeah, smiley smile. I've been a bit obsessed with this, with this artwork recently. I don't know why. Images. Let's see. Smiley smile. I really like this artwork. Um, yeah, I'm gonna save it. Let's see what's the word on desktop. Oh. I'm just gonna throw this in just as a little reference of the flowers that I thought were uh, were interesting. Basically, I'll just use this to start off because I just want to have a sort of reference starting point. And the bird caught my attention with the little flowers in there, which I thought was really cool. Um, Look at the little giraffe. I didn't, I didn't even properly see all the little animals in here. This is quite nice. Look at it. The elephant. Kind of reminds me of some uh, artworks, artworks by uh, Vasti Gunyan. I don't know if I pronounced any everything wrong. Probably. Let's see. Vasti Gunyan. There we go. And then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look. Kind of, kind of. Huh. It's sick. Huh? Look at this. Beautiful. This is, uh, these are some holo dogs. <laughs> Let's see. All right, no crazy questions in, uh, in chat yet. So we're just gonna go ahead and see what we can do with this. I kind of like all these drawn things. Um, I was thinking I really want to learn Blender. I started off last year learning Blender basics 
and um, it, it, I learned sort of the basics. I could adjust some files that uh, were pre-made, um, and I messed around with a little bit with things myself. I'm, I'm still terrible at it. I think that will be my goal this month as well. To, to take the next step in Blender and actually make an artwork in there. So that will probably be something that starts with an idea of this, I guess, painted image. Um, and I don't know what it will be. I like especially also these shapes, these flower shapes, the pointy ones. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely did huge chunk of the donut tutorial. I wish my uh, my music worked. Actually, I don't know if it if it does. Computer audio gonna turn it a little bit up. If you hear music, let me know. No, it's not. Yeah, you hear it through my mic. That's not. Never mind. You should play your own music in the meantime. Otherwise, this might be a little bit boring to uh, to look at. I see in chat. Yosti, you've been learning Blender, yeah, that's really nice. I will uh, reach out probably this month with some uh, play unreleased music, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure about that, Sven. <laughs> Everyone will be mad. Look at this little, little fella. All right, so I like these shapes, right? I kind of like this, this as well sort of framing around it and this so in the middle could be a bird probably I'll do keep the dead bird there and probably have a rough shape can do that I'm just sketching out some stuff now not that I usually do this per se um, I'll probably do this on my uh, on my tablet uh, or on paper. Actually, I'm a very papery guy. I use a lot of uh, I still use a lot of uh, pens. I guess a lot most people do, but uh, I like drawing a lot on paper. It makes it a bit easier for some reason, even though you cannot backspace. But uh, it just feels really nice. Show us your favorite paper. I, I, it's I think it's up or here actually my favorite paper I got it though it's like a very generic printing paper um, but it's like this little eco printing paper you won't see anything it's just thin printing paper basically um, it's great to draw on I really like it That was a terrible answer to what my favorite paper is, but it's just printing paper. Unless I'll do something really crafty, I'll probably get some uh, some other paper in there. Hmm. You know what I think will happen? Yeah, I'll take these. I will probably. I'm quite charmed by the idea of trying to make. A sort of plant like this, like this growing thing. Yeah. But then 3D in Blender, so there's some depth to it. Um, I have no idea how, but we'll figure that out this month. We'll figure that out. I think first off, it's good to we just have that idea. I'm gonna mess around quickly with these flowers as well, with these pointy ones. Damn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See if it selects or if I have the hand mask. Yeah, terrible. Huh? Quickly. 
This will change a lot. For now, I just want to have these rudimental shapes because I've uh, been thinking about them a lot. It sounds really stupid probably, but I actually... I usually visualize a lot. And um, for some artworks, I really have to get started. Also, it, it, it changes time-wise. I uh, Usually, I visualize the artwork before I start it. And then through quite often also the process of creating it. And I also do the same thing usually with video edits, which is... Uh, yeah, I can I can like <laughs> edit the entire video in my mind and then next day I'll get behind my computer and then sort of quite accurately do what I thought of, um, which has been really nice lately. And uh, yeah, it's one of the things I like to do, just spend a lot of time in my mind and think of something. Um, almost fully before I create it. Maybe that's why I don't do a lot of things also. <laughs> Good ideas that don't see the light of day, that happens a lot. Um, also a lot of them that do see light of day, so that's nice. Did you design some of the artwork in the Sun tool recently? Yeah, actually I uh, did all the Baby OK stuff. Baby OK is actually quite a good one to talk about for inspiration because uh, it was a struggle. I'm not gonna lie. It was it was a struggle to find what we were looking for in those artworks in the Baby You OK artworks. Let me check if I have it here. Um, it must be in my. Oh yeah, this one for example. Yeah, Baby OK artwork. This is the green version. It's alternative version. Um, yeah, it's very pragmatic artwork. I think that... Uh, oh, I think that... Um, it was interesting process. We were staying in an Airbnb. Quite nice place, actually. Very... Uh, uh, very... Sunny, brownish place lots of wood like exposed wood almost the entire place was just wood and uh, wood structures etc and I really like the idea of capturing a lot of things in that house to use in the album project because I thought it was quite beautiful to capture as much from the place where it was recorded because San, San Holo which uh, released Baby OK album uh, recorded a lot of audio that was uh, from that exact place like wood creaks, uh, birds chirping, dogs barking, the fence squeaking etc and I tried to capture a lot of these wood grains and um, we subtly used that in these uh, in the original artworks actually and a lot of very digitally looking textures are actually uh, just process textures of that space, which I thought was really nice. Artwork completely changed of what we were making when we were in there. It was way more organic artwork um, at the time. And uh, yeah, we, we really played around in that concept phase for a long time. Um, eventually, we started to realize that Baby OK was about communicating uh, communicating to others, to yourself. And then we thought that it should have been based more on some sort of textual thing, um, which first had a sort of postal, post-surface theme, theme to it. And uh, we boiled it down even more to the like most minimalist form of that, which eventually became just this almost brutalist, I, would, I'm, <laughs> I think, uh, artwork. Um, which to me became very iconic and um, this is actually San Holo's handwriting yeah yeah he, he, he drew a lot of baby UKs yeah and this is the result of that and then I kind of adopted his handwriting and together we worked on the project uh, 
The post-surface thing kind of state, we definitely did a lot in there, but the artwork that eventually uh, became the uh, Baby You OK artwork, which is the pink version of this, uh, kind of lost that, that postal theme, but was like straight up the riding, which for me still connects to it. All the touring stuff, everything beside that, we did mostly riding, um, because the question Baby OK, eventually was most important to us in this project so we thought why make something that doesn't say that question so we basically adopted the theory baby you okay everywhere um, which also resulted in this nice um, series of pictures actually with like photoshopped street signs etc baby you okay everywhere and on tour, uh, we had a lot of cool stuff around uh, the handwriting, etc. Also, there are still little elements that came back. For example, you might have seen this little sort of rainbow dove image. Let's see if I can. Um, but there was also just pieces of the house in which uh, in which we stayed at the time, which was really nice. And stressful time in a good way it's just hard you know when you don't know what you're doing anymore eventually not that that continuously happened in that project but at some point we definitely or I definitely got to a moment where I really had a large creator block and um, how to deal with that you know um, I haven't I haven't figured it out yet but I think it's mostly uh do some other stuff besides what you're usually doing um and uh get that outside inspiration in again uh, otherwise you will be forever stuck in it you also have to just do it i guess start doing it um, if you're really stuck in your mind Let's see, we got the shape. Right. I'll bring this probably to iPad later and then I'll probably just draw over it. That's usually what I do. But usually I start off with just uh, rough. Placing some, uh, I guess some, uh, just some general shapes in the in the space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgive my mouse painting. It doesn't matter at this point for me. So who's gonna? Yossi, you're gonna help me out with the blender part this month. <laughs> I don't know if I can show my iPad screen actually. I don't know how to. terrible color I love it also things I like making really ugly things for some reason uh, that's also interesting often I don't like nice things it's very funny how that works if it looks too smooth I probably don't like it now that's not true but um, I am charmed by ugly stuff uh, yeah I don't know why. Ugly might be the wrong word. It's uh, um, unpolished might be the right word. Or a bit more rough, less refined, and a bit more statement or something. Hmm. Not sure. 
curious if these plants exist in real life. That's what I would usually do right now. I would not probably try to find these plants in real life. And uh, spent probably a couple hours looking at plants. Get totally sidetracked by what I'm actually doing. I think that's part of the process. <laughs> Y'all still hanging in there? <laughs> Let's. I'll, I'll try to read. Uh, I'll try to read chat in the meantime. Uh, what do I use to draw on iPads? I use uh, Procreate a lot. I really like Procreate, and uh, I haven't really tried a lot of the Adobe stuff to be honest. Um, I have to update my Illustrator probably, and uh, yeah, I, I almost solely use Procreate honestly to do my stuff. If I'm drawing, let's see. Nothing is weird stuff in here. You know what's nice in Procreate? You can do the uh, animation, the frame uh, frame assistant, which is really nice. That's kind of how I learned to uh, to uh, illust uh, animate a little bit. Um, Procreate also really got me back into actual drawing, like figuring out stuff. Uh, that's uh, yeah, it's incredible fun. It's such an easy tool to use. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see this well, or should I do this? I think this is my first, the first animation that uh, <laughs> that I did in Procreate, which I basically kind of traced some layers um, from a video that I uh, made for myself. Which is, it's a super short animation. It was just basically experimental. It's very fun to just very roughly sketch, I think, um, with pencil type and uh, just play with it, honestly, uh, experiment. I didn't know I could uh, animate. I didn't even know I could draw, you know, I thought I lost it, but <laughs> I definitely know the animation. I never been really uh, into animation per se. So, uh, the drawing animation, so fun, so fun. And uh, I do a lot, I just do a lot of, uh, I just mess around a lot with like, uh, for Go Slow, for example, just having like all these little graffiti type shit things, which is like how I started with creativity, I would say, uh, mostly was by doing a bit of graffiti back in the days with my friends, which actually has been a great step up creatively um, and definitely made me more adventurous. Got into uh, trying to do portraits for a bit as well on Procreate, that's my mom, shout out to my mom. Got a wild son here. Funny. It's funny to look back at old drawings as well. Let's see. A bit better. Wild to myself also. Actually, it's good. I liked it a lot, but I, I, I kind of cheated with this because I tried to uh, learn how to do portraits a little bit. So I used a lot of tracing of actual pictures. Um, no shame in that, I think. It's a great to, way to learn. And it's a great way to uh, figure out how shapes works, how shapes work. Also a great realization that I had when I was younger was that uh, if you look at objects and you want to draw them, you can totally look at the color differences and the lights and the blocks that it make and just dissect the object into just the, the same color shapes. And then it almost becomes a number painting, um, you know, where, they, where you say like this part is, I don't know, 
gray, this part is a bit lighter gray, etc., etc. And so you kind of realistically can draw the object. Uh, suddenly I realized that, I remember that was a big clicking moment in my mind when I was younger. I thought I invented something, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it, would, it helped me a lot actually with drawing more realistic stuff by seeing how you could divide objects up in light blobs. So I hope that uh, helps some of you. Oh, the scratch sound is still so loud. Yeah, I'm so I'm sorry. I think the rest of it is my mic is a bit soft or something. Low volume. Yeah, the artwork for Create Together Two was so great. Sven and Jeska. I see people giving the compliments in the chat. Um, Somebody asked, were the animated flowers projected on tour made on Procreate? I don't know. I didn't make those flowers actually for the visuals, but uh, a lot of the illustrations and a lot of the show visuals of Sans Show um, definitely were made in Procreate as well, partly. Partly or like certain frames, etc. Um, yeah. It's a great tool and you can make huge, huge canvases. I think I, I drew for a Sun Holo show, we had like a 7,000 pixel wide canvas or something that we used to uh, create stuff on. I don't know if I can show anything. Um, I just have some cute small, you know, yeah, I yeah, can make cute small animations like this. I really like doing this, actually, these super small ones. Um, also just for me, for myself. Let's, let's see any good questions. I'm kind of curious, do you use art books as a starting point sometime or do you usually use stuff you've seen somewhere and try to recall what it was? Do you mean art books as if, as in I make like drawings, uh, I sketch or, or do you mean, oh, art books as in just books like uh, about art? anything really like it doesn't matter for me where inspiration comes from um, yeah it really doesn't matter about where my inspiration comes from it can come from an art book which actually behind me got a great one that uh, I got from Clément shout out for my birthday which was amazing I've been going through this book a lot just it's a Bauhaus book which is great and uh, it has a lot of just weird imagery in it about Bauhaus. Probably cannot really see this, but uh, that's it, that gets me inspired a lot. And then, like I said yesterday, I went to this VR food tasting event. Um, got me incredibly inspired. So it doesn't really matter where it comes from, honestly, um, as long as I get it from somewhere. Or not, huh? I think it's also important to realize that you're not always inspired and uh, sometimes you do have this uh, this block and uh, it's totally fine as well. I think it gets tricky when you work in creative field and you have to perform and you have to make something good. And then if you don't really feel it, then it can get really frustrating. And that's what gets you really, gets you really messed up, you know, and you shouldn't, I guess, feel I don't know, down for not being too creative at the moment. That's totally fair thing to have. Sorry for the stretch, y'all. Here he comes. I will, I will warn beforehand next time. I'm sorry. Yeah, so... I take a lot of inspirations from non-artwork external factors, and those can be anything. 
um, like literally anything. It can also be the sun outside through the trees. It's nice to enjoy these kind of small, beautiful things and feel good. Things that make you feel good usually get you more creative as well. I'm not saying that negative influence cannot make you creative, definitely. But I often tend to be a bit more creative when I'm just happy in my skin and like I'm feeling it and I get to it and I can get in my zone for a bit longer time. Um, and I can get kind of lost in the in the work. If you want to start getting into visuals, where would you recommend starting sunflower signs? Good question. I think define visuals a little bit, right? You can get into just like fish moving visuals, graphic design, etc. I think actually that if you have that question, it is important <laughs> to watch the streams next week. Um, Kalen will be on stream and he'll be uh, telling y'all what different tools there are to get started with uh, uh, with visuals and also perhaps showing some like processing visuals. I think that you should ask yourself the question. Um, where do you want to start going more like a, um, a handmade approach can also be very digital, of course, or do you want to go processing approach where you use more sort of algorithmic visual creation? Um, both fields incredibly dope and both can also really benefit each other. Um, I've been using a bunch of machine learning to create depth maps of things that I already made, create depth maps of video and use that in certain ways to uh, create a new video out of that. Um, that's, yeah, that's a cool thing I like to do. I must check on my other screen for a sec if I have a, a nice example of that. I'm not sure. Because I could just clean my, uh, clean my MacBook. But yeah, next week uh, gonna be really cool. And people will show some tools that I also don't really understand. So I'll be watching as well, because uh, yeah, very dope things come from that. Let's see. This, for example, that mapped video I made for uh, Sun, also used in two officials actually. I was just, here we were experimenting basically also with different layers of Yeah, next week look out for everyone, but also uh, Kalen and Soli. I don't know if y'all can hear the music under this, probably not. But this, yeah, this is just messing around. Um, I, I really like this visual, actually. The music playing is... Um... Damn, I forgot the track name by Son. <laughs> Lost Lake Milk. <laughs> I get lonely around people too, I'm sorry. You cannot hear it anyway, I'm just mumbling right now. Yeah, so that's some experiment actually that used um, uh, that used video footage, um, which I hope I don't have here. Otherwise, I have to show you. No, no, no! Thank God, because we'll look so dumb, not processed. What else is there? Oh, this is like a less processed version of it. That more had just the echo on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like the non-depth fielded version of it. 
which is, as you can see, it's actually behind the cloth, right? So that definitely adds some uh, effect to it. Let's see if I got any other stuff that could be made. I don't need it either. Procreate. No. Drawings. Oh, actually, this is a black and white video run through some uh, just some stylizing machine learning. But this is this is nothing special. This is just also playing around with some stuff. Thought it was actually pretty dope, like this. but not polished enough for me. I'm, I, I just told I'm not about all the polished, but I I do have my uh, preferences, of course. There's some part in here that's actually this dope with all the. And this is this is the simplest stuff. I'm not showing anything crazy here besides that the uh, we had that drawn drawn video, right? And there are plenty of AI tools right now that you can just mess around with, even to create artworks from by just inputting the keywords and have the uh, AI machine learning thing do the rest. I think those tools are super dope for ideation. Also to use actually in your projects, um, absolutely love that stuff, stuff. But that's why I say next week, I think you should watch the creative streams because uh, they'll be showing you a lot more smart things um, that you can use and uh, some ways of processing imagery that I am not really um, aware of. I try to learn every every day. I try to learn every day. Yeah, Fecon clip, super cool. I love it. I love all this stuff. Let's see. Any other questions here? Yeah, and you also have like Google notebooks and stuff in which you can run these machine learning things. You also got like runway ML, which you can uh, do a lot of stuff in. Actually, AI or machine learning, it comes in really handy right now if you want to make like green screen uh, or like isolate objects out of videos. Bam, click the object. It's done. It's done. It's beautiful. I love it. I love that automation. I welcome even more of it. And then the simpler I can get out of my hands what I have in my mind, I'm, I'm down. Let's go. Let's do this. There's also beauty in the in the doing everything of course by uh, by hand but yeah i'm not uh, i'm not against ai and in, cre in the creative field at all i think it can really uh, support each other yeah people making data art super dope super dope actually also recently uh, attended something, uh, an ensemble in which we were all at home playing our phone as a musical instrument on which we all sort of controlled this uh, synthesizer. And uh, we basically played as little choirs or little ensembles. Uh, we, we played, uh, every ensemble played a piece and uh, it was incredibly funny. And, uh, shows what all this technology can do. Actually, you will see the software that was used for that next week during Soyuz uh, live stream. I don't know what to do with this artwork. If you have any suggestions, I should, because uh, I'll probably just keep looking at it until I have a breakthrough in my mind. Should I see if I can cite 
to throw this to my iPad in some way. Maybe I can draw some stuff in there. Are AI visuals to sounds in the process of being created? I'm not sure what you mean with that exactly. Hello, but yeah, I want to work with more on some generative uh, uh, visuals. I like that. I kind of like things that just react to things. <laughs> we actually make the San Holo show a lot of times very direct. Hi hat. Big white flash, for example, you know, and you kind of stick to those very reactive, almost uh, uh, accents on things. What was your favorite project you've worked on, and what projects are you looking forward to that you can talk about? <clears throat> um, it's it's hard to say what my favorite project was because I would say I co-founded Bitbird and I look at that as one big beautiful project so if I I would say that is my favorite project <laughs> um, but that, I guess that's too large that's not what you're looking for um, a lot of San Holo stuff was incredible hmm it's a really hard project you know what's stupid I usually after I made something I hate it so it's really hard to say what my favorite project is. Um, it's, that sounds very, very uh, rough, but uh, I always kind of start to not really like or look at my uh, older projects for some reason. Uh, I think that is uh, not healthy per se, but it's something I have. And uh, I do look back with pride on them though. But you know, I always see all the things wrong with it uh, after the fact. And, uh, but no, I have a lot of, uh, basically all the projects are my favorite projects. Really, it's hard to, to pick, you know, touring stuff is cool. But I also see, look at things like one of the favorite projects I've done was also doing, for example, uh, during touring, meeting up with fans and kind of keep in touch with them and, uh, and, uh work on those things like underground activations, basically, uh, I think that's, uh, very interesting projects I've done that not necessarily have to do with these visual projects, but uh, give me incredible inspiration. So again, sort of outside forces. I think I really like, if I narrow down a bit, I really do look at Bitbird projects. I really like the events we've done. I also really like uh, the former Hero release we've done. I thought that was beautifully uh, Beautifully done visually, also the event, and uh, I, I enjoyed that project a lot. Also, just working with Mike and uh, and the music itself gets me incredibly uh, enthusiastic. Do you creative direct sounds live sets like the Digital Mirage one? Actually, John Hage, John Hage, Hage. Yes. Also. That's one of my favorite projects <laughs> that I look back on and not necessarily hate. Wait, pull it up. What was it? Digital Mirage. It was mixed feelings number two or three. Yo, actually this one was also great. I got help here from Soyun Park for the background visuals, which he did for with the, oh uh, no, advertisement, don't look at this. 
Ah, damn it, now I'm hungry. Is this even allowed? Can I even show this or I get it troubled out? Yeah, we like coming up with this kind of stuff, right? Like, I love one-shot videos. I think this it's incredible fun to shoot one shot, especially if they're way too long. For example, ah, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show I Still See Your Face music video as well. One of my all-time favorites. So this is not the one that uh, got mentioned in chat. This is uh, Secret Sky for the Porto Robinson Secret Sky Festival. And um, uh, I'll show the Digital Mirage one after. This is actually in our hometown studio in Zoetermeer. Um, not all this is our space, it's a shared space uh, with other uh, artists, kunstenaars. This was so cool. I really like doing this. And this also shows that creativity doesn't have to be art because the setup we have here is quite easy actually. It's like uh, lights on the ground, a little projector in the background and a lot of candles and some space. We actually filmed this on on the, on the phone. I just had the phone and the power bank in my hands, honestly. But still, you can get cool stuff quite spontaneously out of you. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go forward a little bit. Damn it. All the candles. But this is also San, right? This is also San saying, I want a thousand candles. But like, can we not have everything full with candles? And then usually I say, yes. Let's do it. Yes, good ideas. Yes, good ideas. In the meantime, I'll read Claw's comment in chat. It's large. So flaws, yeah, I got you done. I argue that the uh, AI can be sounds like it can take over creativity and stuff. I, I, I guess, I guess so. I think so to a certain extent. I think then you probably get a sort of anti-movement again. Like I think that will always be a sort of, yeah, it just pushes itself away again or something. Or we might just actually start really enjoying, uh, start really enjoying, I don't know, like human art. Maybe anything then that's AI created, we will feel bad about. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't think it's like a, a too big of a threat, honestly, on the creative field then. I think people will eventually still gravitate towards things that people have made or have made I've had enough sharing. Let's look at the end of this video because it's uh, it's one of my favorite things. I should have should have installed the ad blocker on this uh, browser. Oh yeah, 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 I'll play it from here because I also always like showing a bit of these behind the scene things. Like my feet play a role in a lot of videos. Yeah, but, but damn, if we don't differentiate anymore with the art, we'll probably be robots anyway. At that point, no?
really like watching this actually. I'll look back at the set. I remember when we shot this and then I worked all night just to keep working on it because it, it was, it enjoyed, I really enjoyed it. Rip to the pillow that caught fire. Yeah, look at this. So much fun, so much fun. And I love that it starts without candles, right? So during the set while filming, everything got placed. It was amazing. Shout out to Flaws for helping us out. Also this one, one of my absolute favorites. And it's... I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble for this being in the, in the video. Insecure, but I realized it was completely normal. Like everyone gets dog spots. All right, all right. Skip that. Let's go. This was so much fun too. I ordered a bunch of these barrels, like twelve of them. Sometimes you gotta clear your head a little bit and get away from caring about what your friends think is cool or whatever. That drilled holes in all the barrels to create the boost logos. And uh, the guy delivered the barrels and he was like, what the hell are you going to do with these? So he burned them. He said, don't put any gasoline in it, they will melt. But they held up. This entire set is uh, recorded in twice the speed to make it look slow motion throughout. So we recorded this entire set twice speed with the original video is also really funny. Same principle, we have the reactive lights in the back, we created a nice scene, and the rest is just pure magic, honestly. At the end, also again, we show kind of the situation. I love these quirky moments in there. Everybody around you, I think, is your ability to experience the real truth of what's really going on. That it's this was crazy. proper get camera gear, by the way. Not just my, my phone. Are you able to show the original video? Alo asks, I suggest you just go to YouTube and hit the uh, speed button. It's not exactly twice, but that's the your, your, uh, easiest way, the, uh, I guess, to see you. I don't recommend it though. This is way more um, magic. Yeah, I love this. Does he not grab the camera at the end? I remember. It's quite long. It's a long video. Yeah, yeah, sound grabs it. Also, I'm not gonna lie, we're blessed to have this space. We can do a lot of cool stuff there. Um, it's in our hometown, Sutomir, and we've been there for, I would say, 10 years now with a bunch of friends, a uh, slightly different group of people than what we started with right now. But um, one day, 10 years ago, basically my friend walked into this terrain that looked very interesting. Um, and uh, he found out that there were studios there and uh, apparently they had some studio open and we were all getting into some of the creative fields. So we asked if there were any studios, they said yes, and the same week, basically, we had a studio, and uh, a lot of things came out of that. Actually, it changed a lot for me. Though, cool to see. I really like this. Thanks for mentioning these sets, uh, by the way. Album visualizer as well. I'm just going to go through it quickly, because I really like doing this as well. Just the writing. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I can't believe the commercials, honestly. I usually have ad blocker and I, and I have uh, YouTube premium, but uh, holy damn. All right, y'all. Is there a big artist scene in Soetermeer? Hmm, no. I wouldn't say, I think, no. Well, I wouldn't say big, it's a small city. I think there are some talented people in Soetermeer, uh, that's for sure. But uh, I wouldn't say it's a huge scene. Actually, back in the day, it was, there was a lot of hip hop uh, going on in Soetermeer, which was great, great times. That was when I was a teenager. And uh, I had a lot of fun going to a lot of hip hop stuff. Um, we didn't really get very far with the artwork. I will show my progress more. I might do another stream. Actually, I'll have another stream later this month with San, the feedback stream. In uh, I think that's a good opportunity to show a little bit of progress um, on this artwork. Uh, was there anything that I've written down that I didn't discuss? Let me see. Yeah, a lot, but I don't think it uh, is that interesting, goal-oriented. It does, all doesn't matter. I like messing around with art and finding cool stuff. I, I have a question for y'all. How can we... Uh, create even more in the discord or like share some more stuff i have a feeling like uh there is still part of sharing cool ideas that is missing and i'd love to get into some more uh, uh processing kind of creativity that uh, uh creative coding etc that i'm not that great at at all uh but i'd love to get more into because uh, i'm so interested in that um let's see What's the point of I'm reading to the chat for a second. I don't see too much questions anymore. I probably missed a whole bunch. I had some questions come in on my phone. Um, I think we should just keep talking and uh, maybe making rooms for projects almost like virtual office spaces. Yeah, that's dope. Anything like that, I'm really into. I'm getting back a bit more into this VR stuff now. Yesterday was also a very exciting thing. Uh, and also the recent Loner Club party we had, uh, which unfortunately I couldn't join in uh, VR in VR chat. I joined it on the through the Twitch. What are we going to do? I think I'm uh, gonna call it a day a little bit. Unless there are some great questions coming through, this is your chance. I love to hear actually about y'all's ideas for Create Together and how it can be changing the world. We can discuss that in Discord uh, this month. After that, actually, I'd love to keep talking about Create Together outside of March as well to see if we can make it a more long lasting thing. Uh, and uh, that's something we should dig into further, which I'll. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much for coming to the stream. Create this beautiful artwork with me. <laughs> oh, I didn't really get past the inspiration uh, moment, but that's totally fine. I didn't expect to live anyway. I'm not that great at making stuff while eyes are on me as well. That's also one of my things that I am uh, not too comfortable with. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the inspiration artwork, the image that has been burnt in my mind for the last week for some reason. It's probably really due to the freaking giraffe. Look at it. So cute. Um, I'll keep you updated on the progress. And this should be 
become 3D esque. So I'll be learning a lot this month, and uh, I hope you are too. Don't forget to join the Discord channel, and if you like, of course, no pressure, join Create Together. There's also no pressure really on, like you have to submit anything, whatever. Like do what you like. Uh, hopefully you do submit at the end of Create Together uh, because we love to see what you came up with. But just anything, basically, just you thinking about participating or grabbing a pen and drawing something, that's already uh, a huge win for me and for Bitbird and for all of us, I think. And uh, stay creating. Let's see. All right, that's something else. For some. Thank you all so much. I'm also anxious for a uh, Create Together tree, but it will be dope. Yeah, I definitely support collaborating, whatever, if it's on art or on music. If you want to do other types of art, by the way, be my guest, right? I know we the only requirement we gave was the size of the canvas for the flat artwork, basically, as it gets distributed to music platforms. But if you want to take a shot at some mu moving stuff, I'm very curious to see. Perhaps there's space where we can use that. We definitely get a, have a live stream stuff upcoming as well for the event. Thanks for sharing the link. Use the Discord slash Bitbird. Let's get it. Spotify Canvas is actually a good idea for each song. We can totally look into that. I think it, that might be personally attached to the people that make the music. So that's interesting. If we would make that one thing or separate for every track. Uh, let's discuss. I like it. All right, y'all. I hope you all have a great night. So I'm gonna change the scene, all right, to like end screen. So there's gonna be a paper rip sound one more time. Okay, I'll count down, I'll count down, yeah? Here we go. Three, two, one.